Excellent, John. Thank you so much. Uh, and I'm going to read out a couple of the questions that appeared. If, if someone wants to try and get one in the chat, that's okay. But uh, I'll read a couple of questions and then we'll probably just open it up uh, so that pe people can ask you directly. But yeah. Right now, first question is, when do the Rufus hummingbirds arrive? That's from Tom Mitchell. Okay, they, they should be here in about two weeks. Uh, there have been a couple of reports, one on uh, San Juan Island and one in Victoria, but the, the main body of them, they, they winter in Mexico, and the reports coming in this week are that they're actually in the, uh, uh, what's the winemaking valley in California? The um, Napa Valley. The Napa. They're, they're in the Napa Valley at the moment, and they should be here in about two weeks' time. I'm going to I'm going to uh, show people a, a birding uh, website that where they could track those birds. So, uh, so I'll do that at the end of the questions here. Uh, That's great. Gene Wilkinson asks, uh, weren't the Canadian geese, Canada geese, introduced to the West Coast? Uh, yes, they were. They were hunted out, I think, in the 1930s, and they were reintroduced. So uh, people are concerned about them or hate them uh it's a, kind of our own fault but that yes they were reintroduced likewise in england they were introduced uh to to hunt them in the pool harbor in dorset and uh because they were so easy to shoot that pe people didn't hunt them and they're now found all over the british isles and all over western europe john uh jillian ashley martz asks if uh you could give out give the call of the crossbills uh because we've had lots of flocks around but i don't think you can unless you're a good mimic there i i'm not a good mimic uh, i'm sorry um and i do have recordings but i don't have them quickly available but they are flying around this year they 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 are somewhat sporadic uh, choosing the cones they eat but there are certainly some around uh, flying in the treetops at the moment around Salisbury. Right, I'll, I'll just put up your slide where people can go and get your recordings, John. Uh, sure. So, so that's a, a way to get the, that recording, uh, Jillian, if you need it. Yeah, they're on, they're on iTunes, and you go to the artist's name, which is John Neville, and then you see all of my CDs, and certainly they'll be on the Bird Songs of Canada, which has got uh, 400 and... 35 Canadian species on it. Excellent. Uh, Anna Paltrek notes that uh, the last couple of days, common mergansers uh, have been seen on, on the north end of St. Mary's Lake. And back to Jillian again, um, she's been hearing s sounds that she thinks sound a little bit like a Swainson's thrush in the last, could that be something else? Uh, yes, it's too early for Swainson's. Um, off the top of my head, I'm sorry, I can't think what it might be. Um, maybe a song sparrow, but no, I'm not, I'm not sure. They, they, they don't arrive till the middle of June. The, the Golden Crown sometimes has that little bit of that. Uh, yeah, that, that could be a, yeah. a possible as well. Yeah. It, uh, it's very hard to answer accurately when you haven't heard the bird. Mary was pointing out that great horned owls are in the woods between Kitchen Road and Cushion Lake. So if anybody hasn't heard them, there's another pair that I've been following just on Rainbow Road, uh, not far from Booth Canal, uh, where it joins Booth Canal Road. Yeah, and there's a pair, there's a pair in the downtown area that's often heard around the hotel or on Churchill Road. Um, Also, barred owls on uh, Kitchen to Garner is is uh, what um, Lori uh, has put. Oh, Lori's asked, where do band-tailed pigeons migrate to, or do they migrate? They they don't. They stick around. Um, they <clears throat> you see them in small flocks in the winter. They will come to feed us, and then they spread out. Uh, one of the places I've come across them regularly in the nesting season is out on Musgrave Landing Road. Aha, uh -huh. I think Jacqueline, Jacqueline is referring 
to the sound possibly that sounded like a Swainson's thrush and said, could it be a fox sparrow? Uh, that's a good possible, yes. Yes. Uh, they're, they're certainly here for the winter. And someone, uh, Anna Haltrecht has, has asked about the trumpeter swans that she saw on Christmas Lake around Christmas, uh, St. Mary's Lake <laughs> around Christmas time. Um, where, when, they, they seem to be gone. Where do they go now? Well, most of them in this region are on the, um, the lake when you go into Duncan. Um, the name isn't coming to me immediately. Salmonus Marsh. Salmonus Marsh. Right. When you drive to Duncan, that there are often more than 200 of them there all through the winter. And uh, another big group around Comox, um, between 600 and 1,000 winter on Vancouver Island. But every winter, a few explore this area. We, we had some uh, over Virgo and Bay, for example, this winter. And uh, I'm not surprised that uh, uh, Anna heard some or saw some on uh, St. Mary's Lake. They, there's so many of them that they obviously go exploring uh, to see if there are any other marshes around. And they have that lovely trumpet call. John, I have a, a special uh, message for you from the Adams Neville family, uh, and it's great presentation, Granddad. Love you. What a nice message. <laughs> and also from your 3P man, uh, another message. <laughs> oh, would you like to hear that story, David? Uh, I don't know. Can you share it with everyone? That's the question. I, well, it's it's a little bit risky, but my eldest grandson came out when we were doing our owl count a few years ago, and uh, he had to go to the bathroom regularly, which corresponded with me getting out to listen for owls. And uh, by the end of the evening, he was very proud to tell Grandma he was a 3P man. Uh, uh, owling with John Neville. Uh, you know what, John? We don't have any new questions or points, so I'm going to go through just a couple of um, of the resources that people might be interested in, and then we'll just uh, we'll just allow people to come in and talk if they want. But just for a couple of minutes here, I'm going to go forward and talk about some of the other resources. So you have John's resources. Please look those up. Uh, I'm sure John would appreciate the, that you are using his material to learn about birds, so terrific. Another resource is the Peterson Field Guide to the Bird Sounds, which you can you can buy on Amazon and other booksellers. And that one uh, links up to uh, to the sounds that you can hear directly. Many of the of the apps that you can get for your phone or or uh, notepad uh, are also useful for for bird bird sounds. And so that's one way to help learn them. Another resource is ebird.org, which is uh, out of Cornell University, but uh, gives you all sorts of, of uh, different resources, including resources to, to um, find more birds, share your findings, and track your birds. And uh, that is ebird.org. And then another one that's really uh, actually allows you sometimes to identify birds by sound. And this one's called BirdNet. And it's part of the Cornell Lab Ornithology Lab uh, group of, of resources. And you can get it at birdnet.cornell.edu. So check that out. Uh, I, I haven't used it myself, but I hear that you can you can try it out and sometimes you can get the right bird, <laughs> but not always. Yeah. Mer Merlin's a good app for-, uh, for Merlin, uh, Merlin, again, from Cornell, isn't it? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's very good. And if you still use CDs, uh, if you go to our website, uh, devilrecording.com, we still have CDs, which a few people still use available and uh, mostly people are using digital files right now but they can yeah. they can turn them into digital I, I should point out that Rocky Point Bird Observatory in Victoria it's the kind of premier bird ornithology site in Victoria 
uh, they've got all kinds of resources and all kinds of things happening. And it's really worth joining that organization. And they're at rpbo.org. And if you're really interested in this, I'd recommend they're doing a little course now on birding by ear. So you can look that up on that site if you really want to get into this in a bigger way. And here we are. This uh, We've had a biophonious time with John, so I really appreciate that. Uh, and of course, there are lots of birds singing early in the morning. Now it's really changing fast, isn't it, John? Uh, it's really fast, yeah. Just uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, house finch is one of the latest ones to start singing, as well as the song sparrows. Terrific, and and this is the if you if people are interested in learning more about birding by ear, it's a great opportunity to get out in the morning on these beautiful mornings and try it out. So, thank you for that.